In today's video, we're going to cover one of the final steps leading up to the EM Clarity workflow, and that is to specify sub-areas of the tilt series that we'd like to form for our tomograms. Now, the idea here is that the full-size tomograms, if you do a 4K by 4K at the pixel dimensions that you're going to be working at for high resolution, you could easily get into the 80 to 100 gigabyte uh, range per tomogram. Even worse, of course, if you decide for some reason to try and work at 8K by 8K. So the trick here is to balance the largest size that you can so that you're pushing as much information to the GPU as possible without also saturating your memory. Um, and in most cases, it's okay, assuming that you also have about 128 gigs available on your um, main memory, to just do half a tomogram, half a 4K, so 4K by 2K. Uh, you do lose some sub-volumes for every division you do, so if you broke that 4K and 4K into little 1K by 1K chunks, you might sacrifice a few tomograms, but then you also place less um, demanding requirements on your main memory. So today, we are assuming that you've already worked through the course alignment using iMod and eTomo, and as such you have this fixed stack directory with the global alignment, local alignment optionally, refined tilt angles, and the tilt collection order so that later we can apply an exposure filter. And additionally, this uh, iMod model file which specifies where the gold beads are. We're also assuming that you've run an initial CTF estimation, which will have created then this align stacks directory, resampling your fixed tomogram and erasing the gold beads, which should be in there. You should also have tilt 2 if you're doing the full tutorial. So we're going to use a script that if anyone wants to rewrite, that would be great, but it's in your folder wherever you downloaded EM Clarity to in the docs, and it's called RecScript2. And we're going to use this in two different ways. The first way is real simple. We're just going to give it an option of negative one. And what that'll do is it'll go into your fixed stack directory, list all the fixed stacks you've created, and for each one, create a new directory called, well, it'll create one bin 10 directory, and then for each stack, create a bin 10 reconstruction. So I'm going to change directories into that bin 10 folder and I only have tilt1 which I'm going to open in imod by typing in imod tilt1.rec and rec is just the convention used for reconstructions. And then we'll take a look at our tomogram and select our areas. So firstly you want to be in model mode whenever we're creating this and again imod models just specify points, uh, Cartesian coordinates, which then in this particular case, we'll specify an X min and X max, a Y min and Y max, and a Z min and Z max for the reconstruction process. So this is a little bit touchy. Uh, what you want to do is, in mo model mode, your cursor will appear as a crosshair. You can toggle back and forth with the M key. And then before we go ahead and create the model, just note that we can see the edge of the carbon here and just look at the features in your individual tomograms. So we've got this big um, chunk of junk down here in the lower portion of the tomogram. And as we scan up with page up, we can see that we also then have basically two layers of ribosome showing up here. We've got this predominantly flat layer on the top and a pretty separate second layer down here. You could totally exclude the second layer. You could segregate them into two different tomograms. You could do a lot of different things. Uh, I would recommend probably splitting this into four tomograms, but for the sake of expediency today, what I'll show you is just to split it into two in the top and bottom. So we have to specify six points for each tomogram sequentially. So we'll start with the X min, strike the N key to specify a new contour, and then select the X max. Hit the N key again. We're going to go Y min and then Y max. Now here I'm clicking the right key on the mouse to tell me on the screen where I'm at and halfway through this tomogram is 186 pixels. It's important not to have any real significant overlap. Now these subvolumes, these ribosomes that are along the edge are going to be excluded from the analysis anyhow. We only use from the particle size in, or one full particle size in is erased. So you don't have to worry about accidentally duplicating your results as long as you don't have overlap. And of course, if you had duplicates, they could end up in the same half set, which would invalidate the gold standard hypothesis. So this is on you to do correctly. So we have the X-min, 
x max, y min, and y max for this particular tomogram. Now we just need to specify z min. So we'll scan down using the page down, getting to the bottom where we don't see any more ribosomes, then going a few more layers. And then we'll scan up to the top again using page up and select that point. So at this point we have six contours which fully specify the uh, cubic dimensions for this tomogram. Now within the same tilt series we're going to specify a second tomogram on the top half. So we'll strike N starting from 7 for the first point of the second tomogram. And again X min and X max. We'll select at 186 or close to it. Our Y min and Y max. Our Z min and our Z max. Now when you change Z height, it automatically starts a new contour, so you don't actually have to hit N in between, but it's a good habit just to do it each time. So for two tomograms, we should have 12 contours, as we do. We'll close iMod, saving the model, and we want to save it with the same file name, same base file name as our reconstruction, but we'll change the extension to mod. Now you'll do that for both tilt 1 and tilt 2, and then we'll run this uh, rec script one more time, but this time we're going to give it the base name. So this base name was tilt1, so I'll just say tilt1. So you could do this in a for loop if you had a bunch of tomograms, for tilt1, tilt2, tilt3. I'm just going to run it for tilt1. Oops. And we need to change back into our main working directory before we do that. So I'll just run that again. And what that's going to do is it translates that uh, I'm on model file into some coordinates that will be saved in this folder called recon. And there's two different sets. There's recon with a shell script and recon.chords. Um, so if I just print out the contents of oops, this guy, <laughs> I'll explain it. What it tells us is that we've got the prefix that is going to be then read into the metadata that's stored about the subtomogram project, the number of tomograms in that tilt series, the width, y min and y max, the thickness, and any offsets to the center and x and z. And these are used to use iMod's uh, weighted back projection at different stages throughout the process by Ian Clarity. So it's really important that you specify these correctly. It will spit out some simple error messages if for some reason, say you had a contour point missing. Uh, but it's also good to look at these and verify that you have something kind of reasonable. Uh, one other good checkpoint is after we do the template matching, an average from every individual tomogram will be created. And so if you've really goofed up, it'll be pretty obvious. So that is all we need to do to specify the reconstruction geometry. We don't actually make the reconstruction at this point. EM Clarity will handle that. And then we will move on to template matching next, and from there on to subtomogram processing. Hopefully that was helpful, and thanks for listening.